Hello friends, today we are going to discuss one model which is widely used in the screening of drugs which are used again myocardial necrosis or myocardial infarction and the model is isoprotrenol induced myocardial necrosis or myocardial infarction in rats. So actually myocardial infarction is nothing but the heart attack and it occurs when the blood supply to the heart is interrupted. As a result of interruption in the blood supply, there is a formation of ischemia or oxygen shortage, which causes the damage and potential death of the heart tissue. It has been reported that high doses of sympathomimetics, they can produce cardiac necrosis. Isoprotrenol is a catecholamine, which was widely tested as a model for uh, myocardial necrosis. It can produce infarct-like myocardial lesions in the rat. It was described by Rona et al. in 1959. Several drugs are tested and the study is still going on related to the sympatholytics or calcium channel blockers or antioxidants in the prevention or treatment of isoprotrenol induced myocardial infarction. Excess amount of catecholamine, it can produce various changes, various alterations in the myocardial tissue. It produces the functional hypoxia or ischemia, which results in increased oxygen demand and oxygen supply is decreases. That is imbalance between oxygen demand and oxygen supply. It can also produce coronary insufficiency, which results in coronary spasms and hemodynamic changes. Intracellular calcium overload was there, increase in calcium entry. It can also produce metabolic changes, which leads to the lipolysis, then hydrolysis of ATP, uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation. It also produces oxidative stress. Catecholamine undergo oxidation and forms the oxygen radicals. It increases the per membrane permeability. And all these different alterations can lead to the myocardial cell damage. So a researcher can work on these various targets to prevent the myocardial infarction by isoprotrenol. Now let's see how the model is developed. For this, you have to take the male rat weight range between 150 to 200 gram. In each group, one considered as a control, another is control a disease and a treatment. Likewise, you can group the animal in different group. In each group, Minimum 10 animals are required because in case of isoprotrenol, the mortality is high and it is absurd. So as a safe site, one has to take 10 rats in a group. Now, the rat is pre-treated with the test drug or any standard drug with a suitable route of administration, say oral route or subcutaneous routes depending on the property of the drug. And the duration of treatment is again varies depending on the category of the drug. So after the pre-treatment period, the isoprotrenol has to be administered for two consecutive days into the rat. The dose of isoprotrenol, it has to be standardized in our own lab because it is varies from 100 to 200 mg per kg subcutaneously. Care should be taken that isoprotrenol is administered immediately uh, to the rat. Otherwise, it will produce the toxic effect. So, these two consecutive injection, uh, subcutaneous injection of, of isoprotrenol at these doses has to be administered. The period between these two is 24 hours differences. After 48 hours of first dose of isoprotrenol, we have to uh, anesthetize the animal, remove the serum, 
for biochemical estimation, sacrifice the animal for some different estimations or the parameters are evaluated. For example, suppose you have started the pretreatment of the animal first day and your treatment is for 28 days. Then at 29 days, you have to administer isoproteinol subcutaneous. This is first dose. After 24 hours, you have to administer the seven do second dose of isoproteinol. This is the second dose. And after again 24 hours, this is the 24 hours difference. And after at the you know, 31st day, you can evaluate the parameters because in three, this part, the 48 hours is already completed. So at this end, you can start evaluating the various parameters. There is a range of parameters depending on the requirement, uh, author can, uh, the category of the drug, author can target that particular parameters. Some parameters which are important, first is the electrocardiographic measurements, one has to go with the ECG changes into the rat. Then measurement of blood pressure is uh, very important as you have to pre-treat the animal and then at the end you can administer the isoproteinol. It is advised to take the blood pressure monitoring by indirect method by using the tail cuff apparatus. Then go with the DNA fragmentation if you want to check the apoptosis, necrosis or differentiate between that by using the gel electrophoresis when can go with that. Then the TTC staining that is triphenyl tetrazoleum uh, staining that macroscopic enzyme mapping this will gives you the infarct area after treatment with the isoproteinol then some biochemical markers of which are specific to the cardiac like troponin t then ldh ckmb can be estimated Endogenous antioxidants and membrane worm phosphatase. If you are testing your drug as antioxidant, then this parameter is very important. In the heart homogenate, one can go with this uh, endogenous antioxidant measurement. How to prepare the homogenates of the tissue? I have already uploaded one video about the tissue homogenation. Then go with the histopathological study this is the uh, hematoxylin and eosin staining this is the past staining this is the machine trichome staining different staining techniques having the different importance so if you like this uh, video you can subscribe you can share and thank you for uh, listening this experiment this is used for pg students for their uh, MPOM uh, screening technique uh, syllabus.